welcome to this video. This video is to demonstrate how to use a dingle dangle with J hooks on a pulley rig of all things, right? And in this video, I'm gonna do two rigs, a pulley rig with J hooks and a pulley rig with circle hooks. All of it, snelling the lot, everything, including a stop knot is done with one knot. It's the figure of eight, the most versatile knot in the world. It does everything that seven or eight different knots do. It can be leader knots. It can snell, it's a stop knot, the list goes on. So let's get started. What seems to be the fashion the last few years was a circle hook at the top and a J hook at the bottom, right? Like this, okay? In a kind of panel configuration. I am convinced that this is an imitation of the South African dingle dangle. And I think that the, the fashion for fishing with a J hook down the bottom, right, was adopted from this arrangement here but the problem with it is right hooks are not supposed to be in design a part of a bait release system they're supposed to be for hooking fish right for me i think that this works a lot better for centralizing the bait and keeping it stable to stop it from wobbling and stop it on clipping but that's also got to do with the shape of the rig as well but what a lot of people do these days they use a circle hook up at the top and they use a j hook down the bottom so with this system you can still actually do that if that's what you like. Now I'm going to tie the pulley rig and this one is going to be just a standard pulley rig and then I will add a dingle dangle to it just so you can see how that works. Okay, if you want to fish this way, you want to use a dingle dangle, it works best with circle hooks, but it will work with J hooks. But there's one thing that's for sure, it will present your bait better than just if it was just on a hook alone. And you will have better hook positioning if you use a dingle dangle, rather than the hook being incorporated into being a part of the bait release system, which it shouldn't be, is my point. And with a dingle dangle, it takes care of that for you. And also, at the same time, it is also a baiting tool as well. So instead of taking off the baiting tool, you just leave it on and connect the baiting tool to the hook which is the baiting tool is also part of a bait release system. And to me, that's better than having a hook doing a job it's not supposed to be doing, right? A lot of people use stuff for purposes that they were not intended for. And this is a case of that. And this solves it. So I'm going to show you that in this video. So first of all, most pulley rigs will contain at least three swivels, right? One being a pulley bead, right? And the other two, are standard swivels, right? But there is an easier and cheaper way to do it. And that is to remove that last swivel and replace it with a stop knot. It is quicker, it is cheaper, it is adjustable as well. That's what I'm going to do today. You take your swivel and your lead link, right? Now, this pulley rig only has two swivels in it. And it's these two here, right? Normally, there'll be a third one that goes in front of this one. But that is completely unnecessary. You just don't need it. And also you don't need a bead either because the clue is in the name, pulley bead, right? <laughs> For years I've been watching people put beads in front of pulley beads. Yeah, it's useless. So first of all, I'm gonna show you that the most versatile knot in the world, it is the figure of eight, right? It is so simple. But of course, with all knots, the finer the diameter, the more turns you've got to put into it. In this case, loops right but with heavy line like this 80 pound two loops will do unless it's a supple type of fishing line then you might need three you can even tie seven strand wire with this knot so you just go around your finger twice yes through the back then you open it up and then you'll see where it gets its name from it is also known as the centurion and a few other names there are many different ways to tie it in actual fact, but this way illustrates it the best. So then you close it fully. Now, this knot is so cool that it will not kink the line when I slide it down, okay? There's no pigtailing or anything like that going on here. And that's true of wire as well. You just need to seat it before you close it. And then you close it completely, right? Take off your tag and there we go, right? Now there's gonna be some people that would like to see a bead behind this swivel. So I will relent and put one there. So you bunch of tarts, there you go. One eight mil, 
rubber bead okay and i will put that on before this one okay so the knot doesn't get damaged right <laughs> i suppose there's no harm in it right for standard everyday use for cod rays that kind of thing i just like a body's length most people would actually say that that's too long but i find it fishes fantastically for everything rays the lot cod everything short is no good short casts further that's all you want the bait as far away from the rig body as you can get. So then you put on your 8mm tarty bead, right? You slide that down, okay? And then you take your pulley bead, right? And you slide that down, right? So that's it for the components right now, apart from the hooks. In this video, I'm going to do two types of hooks. I don't use J-hooks a lot, except for conger eels, eels in particular. Circle hooks work just as well for me in most situations so i really don't find myself using these very much anymore but first of all right this is going to be a fixed panel rig as i said well, these rigs are all tied with one knot and that knot is the figure of eight okay i'm going to demonstrate how to do it right all hooks whether they're j hooks or circle hooks if you're going to snell onto the shank you have to pass the line through this way whether you snell it on and go up this way or you snell it on and go down that way, it doesn't matter, right? It just needs to be from the front to the back or the back to the front, okay? If that's confusing, it's not my fault. <laughs> the first one of these we're gonna put on is what is known as the carry hook because it carries the weight of the dingle dangle the bait when it's being cast. So it's quite simple. Normally when you tie a figure of eight, you go around your finger, but in this case, you go around your finger and the hook, okay? The shank of the hook, so you go around your finger twice and the shank of the hook, right? You take it, you pass the loop from the back to the front and you open it up and there is your figure of eight. You close it, you slide it down and that's it there. So that's your first hook done, that's the carry hook. If you must, you could put some shrink tube on that, but it's, it's really not necessary. And so then the last hook, right? With a standard pulley, you know, you just put it wherever, right? And you move that top hook to suit the bait, but it doesn't matter what a dingle dangle, right? So as a standard kind of a thing, what I do is I take it up pretty close and then I just go around, I just tie another figure of eight. It's the same every time. Two loops around your finger, in through the back, Open it up, close it, slide it down, and set it. That's it. So now we're going to move on to the rest of it. And here's the dingle dangle, right? And I'm going to put it on here like this, right? Now, so there you go. And now you can see that hook is a little bit longer, right? You just wrap it around the back and position this hook wherever you want. So I got a bit of foam to help illustrate this, okay? And I actually use this for float on the dingle dangles as well. In rig. So I'm going to get a scissors to open it up so you can slide it on. Then you slide it onto the dingle dangle. So like I was saying, you just put this one in. Just say you just come around the back there. Right. And you just nick this hook in anywhere there. Okay. It's not carrying any weight at all, that hook. Right. All the weight is carried by the top one there. Okay. So it can go actually anywhere on that bait that you like. Right. Okay, that's it. Now this rig is practically finished. It's just missing one thing, you say. Something to stop that bead there. Well, that's just done with a simple stop knot. And I'll tell you what, can you guess which knot is used to do it? That's right, fish heads. The figure of eight. <laughs> you take yourself a little bit of line. The interesting thing about the figure of eight is you can actually tie this knot with as many turns as you can open, right, basically. If you wanted to put 20 loops on your finger and pass that thing through, you just need to be able to open it and it will be about this long and it'll be on that line and it will never move. But I'm just gonna use four because I want it to move and I'm going to stabilize it and hold it in place with just a drop of super glue, okay? You might think that's a little bit more trouble than you wanna to go to, but consider the price of a pack of swivels, okay? Good ones, not cheap, nasty ones, good ones. So you just go around your finger. I'm just gonna go around four times. That's once, twice, three times, four times, okay? <laughs> it's a bit springy. Through the back, 
Okay. Now you just open up. It is a little bit more tricky with the more turns in it, but it's not anything you won't be able to figure out. You just pull at it. You just open up like that with your two fingers, right? And you close it down where you want it, okay? So I'm just gonna tighten it a little bit and decide whereabouts I want this knot, okay? I want this to be self-adjustable, right? So, so I want it almost even, so with a little bit of bias towards the hooks, okay? That's just where I like it. Now I'm going to tighten it. When I say bias, I mean a little bit more towards the hook side. So there we go. So we just tighten it down. You can cut it really close because you're going to put glue on it. So there we go. A little drop. I'm just going to mimic this because, you know, drop glue. <laughs> because I'm going to reuse this and I don't want to have to position it again. Here we are with our rig tied up with J hooks, a pulley rig and a dingle dangle, right? You have to admit, that's a pretty saucy hook arrangement there, right? If you had a load of black lug, put them on there and whip them up. You can fish this with anything. It doesn't have to be fish baits. I use it for lug worm as well. So there we go. Can you see what I'm saying? The flow's got nothing to do with it. The flow is just mimicking the bait. It depends where you want to put that hook. It doesn't matter. There's no tension on that hook. It's all on that top fixed panel there. Yes, so that's it. Now I'm going to connect it to a lead weight and show you how to fish this almost like a south african rig the bait could not get that big the pulley rig was not designed for casting big baits it was designed to keep leads up out of rocks and cast a lot of lugworm a long way put it that way and uk british isles six eight lugworm is a big bait but in some parts of the world it just isn't so i'm going to show you how to deal with this and this is another south african measure shall we say this is how they deal with it as well their trouble is to stop the bottom of that interfering with their big baits, right? So what they've done is they've just bent it slightly to one side. I'm gonna put this on the end of this lead weight, okay? So then I'm gonna take Dingle Dangle and I'm gonna hook it up to the bait clip on the lead weight. This is a bait clip in itself, bait loop, let's call it. I'm gonna take the swivel and you're gonna see something. There's the bait, right? Everything's in perfect symmetry, right? There's the bait, there's the lead weight. I'll just hang that like this so you can see what I mean. That you know, this, the symmetry is there, okay? And that bait is not touching the rig body. So, in fact, I think you have an extra half a centimeter there to bulk this bait out. You can get a fairly decent bait on here, okay? And that's the way you can fish dingle dangles and J hooks at the same time. And it is better, okay? It doesn't push against the rig body, so you can cast it further. So many times they unclip when you try to cast an oversized bait with a pulley. And there's the answer to it. I suppose it would even work without the dingle dangle. It'd definitely help you anyway. But with a dingle dangle, it's lethal. Because now the hook is doing only one job. So now I'm going to change it. I'm going to show you how to fish a circle hook. Exactly the same way. Circle hook. It's the same rig, okay? I've just cut the hooks off the and I'm going to have to move the stop knot. That's why I didn't glue it. Okay, once again, the figure of eight knot can also be used as a snell. I wasn't joking when I said there's only one knot in this video. You come through the front to the back to make sure that hook is coming in this way here, from the front to the back, okay? And now you take it and you use your, your hand and the hook. The hook just takes place of your finger while you're holding it. Do you know what I'm saying, right? So there's the circle there, the two loops. You just pass it through the back there like that. Now, this, this knot has been tied around the shank like a stop knot, right? So now this knot is as strong as it possibly can be. Knots cut themselves because they tighten down on themselves. Once a knot is tied around another entity of tackle, that's, let's just say, that is stronger than itself, it can't cut itself. It will break at its rated breaking strength. You follow me? So then you open up. The figure of eight you close the figure of eight and you slide it down you moisten it and now you cut off your tag so there you go there you go you can put three turns four turns whatever you like now from this point we're back to just fishing them like you would normally this is a 10 circle hook a fine wire one the only thing restricting this rig now from casting half a mackerel is the rig body and it will never get there there is a version i've tied of it I called it the pulley ring rig, but at the end of the day, it's overly complicated and unnecessary. I wanted to try and salvage the pulley rig in an effort, because I loved it so much. 
but it just becomes too complicated. So you can't get any simpler than this. If I'm going to fish a big bait, I'm going to use a South African rig. They invented it for a reason. If they could have used a pulley rig, they would have. So you just put on your dingle dangle onto your circle hook. You could just fish this as float if you wanted, but it's going to mimic a bait right now. And just as before, there you go. So now you could fish a circle hook and six or eight lugworm for a cod instead of two J hooks and save yourself some fish and also get the hook up that you really need. Once you get these circle hooks working for you, you will drop so much less fish. It will astonish you. I've been fishing this way now for over six years. So there we go there. Doesn't get any easier than that. And just one knot. I hope people find this helpful. I hope it saves you money and I hope it catches your fish. Wherever you are in the world, remember, I'll see you on the beach. Bye.